Can you imagine a coach in sport that didn't scout their opponent before a big match? What about an athlete that didn't warm up and mentally prepare before a performance? Their chances of success would dramatically go down. There's a lot of similarities between sports and our profession of sales. I found this out firsthand when I spent four years working around some of the best athletes in the world in Orlando, Florida. When it's game time, we have to be on, just like they do. It doesn't make a difference what happened on the last call, just like it doesn't matter the last time they went to bat. Our customers really don't care if we're having a bad day or if shipping is driving us nuts. They want our best right now, no excuses. Preparation is another major key for each one of our arenas. And both athletes and sales professionals have to push past fatigue, doubt, and anxiousness every day. Since we have these similarities, it only stands to reason that we should take the same approach to training that athletes do. In a word, we have to become more deliberate. Hi, this is Jeff Howard from Winning Sales Habits, and this is video three out of a four-part series explaining what sales habits we as sales professionals can adopt immediately to boost our sales performance. So far in this training series, we started out by looking at what was holding us back, what we called monkey traps. And we also talked about getting real, about what that gap is between where we currently are and where we really want to go. In our last session, we looked at the first two habits to adopt. First, we need to tap into our purpose. Those are those reasons why we want to accomplish our sales goals. They're much more important than the how. The second habit was to create an environment that will support our goals. Have you taken a look at your office, your car, or your peer group? Did you add some color, light, or music to your surroundings? How about your purpose? Did you think about why you do what you do? How does your daily activity relate to your deepest values and beliefs? Now, just having knowledge about these habits isn't enough. We need to turn this knowledge into action. We need to write down some next steps. We need to put it on paper and we need to execute. That's what's going to get us the results that we really want. So what's new for this session? Well, this session is all about call preparation. The two habits we're going to talk about today is how you can actually scout your customer just like that coach scouted his opponent. And the second is designing a pre-call ritual so that we're ready to perform when we get in front of the customer every single time. So first, let's look at scouting your customer. All of us have a unique buying process. The way that we connect things together in our brain and make decisions. As salespeople, most of us sell the way that we want to be sold. We sell the things that are important to us. We use words that have meaning to us. And we connect the dots in a way that makes sense to us. A coach in sport wants to know everything about his opponent. Their strengths, their weaknesses, their tendencies, their stats. A football coach analyzes film of all of his opponent's other games so that he knows what to expect. Peter once was a consultant for the Washington Capitals hockey team. He says it was amazing to see how much attention went into this scouting process. If only salespeople would spend just one-tenth of the time scouting their customers, the results would be huge. Now, we're not the opponent of our customer, but the concept of getting this level of information is still key. So here are some questions to ask yourself as you do your own client scouting report. How do they think? Are they more left-brained, I mean analytical or structural? Or are they more right-brained, that is conceptual, big-picture people? Or are they social people? We need to listen to their language. Do they talk a lot about the vision of their company? If so, then we need to make sure that we hit on how our product fits into that vision. If they seem to weigh everything out, include stats and numbers in your presentation. And if they talk about how this may affect others in their company, their family, or their community, we need to hit on the social aspects. We need to sell the way that they want to buy. The second question to ask is, what information do I need to connect with them and help them down the decision-making path? Now, back in the late 80s, when I got into sales, 
There was a book called Swim with the Sharks Without Being Eaten Alive. Harvey McKay, the author, came up with what he called his McKay 66. These were 66 things that he would love to know about each one of his clients. Then on every sales call, he went out trying to fill this puzzle. In Daily Sales Coach, we go through an entire section on how people make decisions and use an instrument called Emergenetics. Emergenetics is a test that has been taken by over 350,000 people to see what their thinking tendencies are and how they make decisions. It's absolutely fascinating to see how we can use this tool to quickly identify how people think and sell more. But for now though, your action plan is to start your own scouting report on your clients. Start to take notes and write down what information, if you had it, would allow you to better serve them. The second habit in this section is setting up a pre-call ritual. Now, a ritual seems like a pretty odd thing to talk about in a sales training program, but let's look at why rituals are so important. Remember, we said that science shows that 95% of everything that you and I do each and every day, our thoughts, our actions, they're all controlled by habit. Only 5% is controlled by the conscious thoughts we have. That's why rituals are so important. We can't remember everything. When we're flying from one sales call to another, putting out a million fires, we need something to trigger us at our best. And that's what rituals do. As human beings, we create rituals around everything that's important. We have rituals around religious functions. We have rituals around holidays and celebrations. Militaries have rituals. Our families create our own rituals, and even spouses create rituals together. Rituals give us a sense of control in the midst of our hectic lives. Rituals give us a simple task that can lead to a more important habit. Rituals trigger positive emotions. So what kind of rituals should we have before we meet with a client? Well, let's compare a sales ritual to the on-deck circle in baseball. When a batter steps out of the dugout and goes to bat, they never go straight to the plate. They go to the on-deck circle, where they swing a couple of bats, knock the dirt off their cleats, and mentally prepare themselves for the performance at the plate. This on-deck circle routine is a perfect example of what we call a performance ritual. It's a brief routine to help you set your attitude before you begin a performance. Unfortunately, many salespeople never take that break. They go from one performance to another, never taking the time to step back. A ritual creates an official break from the torment of demands and provides an opportunity to consciously reset your brain to a state of energy, focus, and calm. Before we look at building your sales rituals, let's look at some examples from others. We have a client who's a 20-year member of the insurance industry's million-dollar roundtable. He says this, I consider each one of my sales calls as an investment, which is why I plan so conscientiously. I fully expect to get the appointment. I think through my phone call until I feel that the prospective client can't live without me. Once I'm convinced the prospect needs me, I look forward to the call. How would having an attitude like that affect your next sales call? I mean, this guy's convinced that the customer can't live without him. Another example comes from a group sales director for Alcon Surgical. He says, one of the most effective things that I do when I'm tired and tense is just to take a couple of minutes before the sales call and do some deep breathing. Sometimes I'll do it sitting in my car in the parking lot before going into the sales call. I take some time to get energized and relaxed. Rituals don't need to be complicated, and they don't need to be long either. Most of us don't have much time. But using our analogy to sports, a tennis player has just 16 seconds between tennis points. Can't we carve out just 16 seconds between sales calls to make sure that we're prepared mentally, emotionally, and physically? So here are some guidelines to building sales rituals. Plan two different pre-call rituals. One where we might have a little extra time, two to five minutes or so. The other is a really brief one. That's the 15 to 30 second variety. Then design your ritual that touches every part of you. 
your ritual should have a physical component. It could be breathing, stretching, a brief walk if you have the time, maybe even just a posture change. Your ritual should also have a mental component. You should visualize what you want to accomplish on the sales call. You can review information or past buying histories. You can look at your scouting report. Next, your ritual needs some emotion. You want to feel positive, psyched, jazzed, challenged, and confident. Bring some emotion into it. And lastly, your ritual should connect back to your purpose. It should connect your sales call to your wider vision, purpose, values, and beliefs. You need that reason why to create meaning for your actions. So there you have it. Two more habits. Scout your customer and conduct a pre-call ritual. We cover a lot more during the Daily Sales Coach program, but this should give you enough to get started right now so that you can see some sales results right now. Until our fourth and final training session in this series, have a great day selling.